Now let's move on to the middle of the talk. And what I'd like to look at here is how do you choose the details to focus on? Because when you think about most presentations, most presentations are a fairly constrained situation. And what I mean by that is that you get a relatively short period of time to talk about a lot of information. And you could think of it, a way that you might visualize this for yourself is think about, if you look at this picture, think about every fish on this screen, on the picture on the left, every fish as a detail about your work, right? So your work is big, it's vast, and there are a lot of details. And what happens when someone gives a talk or is asked to give a talk, somebody might say, hey, you know, I'd like you to give a talk uh, you know, at the next, the next meeting. Uh, we'll put 15 minutes on the agenda for you to talk about your work. And immediately the presenter takes a look at all of this and starts figuring out how many fish can I fit into those 15 minutes, right? I've got all this how many can I pack in. That's typically the strategy. But what happens when you do this, and it's common, when you try to share everything, the most typical result is that you actually share almost nothing. It really overwhelms the audience. And if you look at this, do you see how there's very actually, even though you can see there's all these details, you actually can't really see much about those fish in the picture. So the best presenters are really good at this part right here, the filter. The best presenters know how to look at all of that information and to pick out the parts that make the most sense for that audience and that context. They choose what I call the big fish, right? The big fish are the most important details for that situation. And this is probably one of the most, sometimes the most painful part, actually, of, of constructing a presentation. This is not easy, and I want to make sure that that's clear up front. This is something that a lot of uh, presenters struggle with. And one of the most common struggles, the reason that this is so hard, is that you have, as a presenter, it's likely that you have an emotional attachment, all right, to some of these fish <laughs> over here, okay? And that's all right. That's good. You work, you live with these fish, all right? So it's okay that you care about them and have an emotional attachment to them. But for your audience, the, the ones that you really love maybe aren't the same ones that they need. And that is a challenge. So perfect example, I was working with uh, a researcher in a, a, a large a Fortune 50 company this summer, right? And so this researcher uh, was going to, he had actually been selected to present to the C-level board of this Fortune 50 company. Big deal, all right? So he had a really innovative product, uh, in the, a project in the area of food science. He was asked to bring this, you know, to this, uh, this convention that was happening in the summer, and he was going to get 10 minutes to talk to the C-level board. Big deal. And so I came in to, to work with him as a coach. Right, to help him with that 10 minutes because it was a big deal for his whole group that, that this, uh, you know, this idea had been selected as something really innovative that the board wanted to hear about. So here is a perfect example, and this is a conversation, but this I couldn't have come up with a better example of a conversation I've had many times. He sent me the first draft of the presentation. So 10 minute talk, he had about 10 slides. Four of those slides were all about how he developed the methodology for the work. Now. Here's the thing. In the end, it was all about what the result was and what the market value right, of, this, of this, this innovation. That's really what the business impact was. And, even, and, the re, and when I said to him, I said, well, boy, it really seems like you're spending for a 10-minute talk. I mean, you have a lot of slides on this one area with methodology. And he said, well, he said, this project took me 18 months. Nine of those months were spent on figuring out the methodology to actually get this great result. And here's what I actually what I said to him. I said, that, oh man, that sounds hard. And I really think that you should go home and talk to your wife about it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is, is that do you think that that C-level board cared about the struggle, the nine-month scientist struggle to develop that methodology? No. And here's the, and I understand how, like, I mean, this was, I wish, it was a video conference, I wish I could have hugged the guy, right? Because it really, you know, he was really emotionally attached to that. And it was hard, and it was the most important part of the work. And I think that is something that is great. To, I mean, take your, take your lab mates out for a happy hour and talk about how hard those <laughs> nine months were, right? But we have to think about, and this is the part, this is the, as a coach, this is what I was trying to help him with. 
was that, I'm sorry, but for the sea level, they don't care about that fish, right? They care about these other ones. 